Hi, my name is Timo Dumler and I'm C++ Developer Advocate at JetBrains. In this video, we're going to go through the different toolchain options available in C-Line on Windows. If you use C-Line on Windows, you have quite a large selection of different toolchains, more so than on other operating systems. In this video, we will briefly describe all of them. By default, C-Line uses the MinGW toolchain on Windows. MinGW is a free and open source development environment that contains a Windows port of the GCC compiler, GDB debugger, and other tools that are capable of creating native Windows applications. Starting from C-Line 2021.3, MinGW comes bundled with C-Line. So if you have a fresh, clean Windows installation, like the one I have here, and you just install C-Line and nothing else, MinGW is the one toolchain on Windows that will just work out of the box. We now bundle the 64-bit version of MinGW with C-Line. With that, you can immediately start developing on C and C++ on Windows, even if you have nothing else installed. Now, I'm just going to copy-paste some code that will print the compiler name and version. If you run that, we see that the compiler is GCC and the version bundled with C-Line is currently 11.2.0. Now, MinGW is great. But you might also want to use the native toolchain on Windows, which is the Microsoft Visual Studio toolchain. On this machine, if I select Visual Studio, it is not going to work because I do not have Visual Studio installed yet. I'm not going to show how to install Visual Studio in this video. Instead, I'm going to switch to a machine where I already have it installed. Now, you can select the Visual Studio and toolchain in the C-Line and it will find your Microsoft compiler. If you have multiple versions of the Microsoft compiler installed, you can select which one you'd like to use. As you can see here, I have Visual Studio 2022 and 2019, as well as the command line tools from the 2017 version. You don't actually have to install the Visual Studio IDE if you don't need it. It's enough to install the command line tools. You can also configure some other options here, like the target platform and the Windows SDK version. Also, if instead of Microsoft's own compiler, you would like to use the Clang CL compiler that comes with Visual Studio, you can use that with C-Line as well. For that, you need to select the Clang CL executable as your C compiler and your C++ compiler. Note that Clang CL isn't installed by default. You need to select C++ Clang tools for Windows in the Visual Studio installer to get it. C-Line should then automatically detect it and it should appear in the drop-down list. But if not, you can search for it manually inside the Visual Studio installation folder. Now, in order to actually use this toolchain to compile and run our project, we can either drag the toolchain to the top, which makes it the default toolchain in C-Line, or in case your project is a CMake project, you can create a new CMake profile for it. To do this, go to the CMake settings, copy an existing profile, and change the toolchain to the Visual Studio toolchain we just created. Now, if you add a new CMake configuration, C-Line needs to reload the CMake project, which will take a moment. After this is complete, you can now select this new profile in C-Line's Run Configuration dropdown. If you run it, you can see that our code now prints MSVC and its version number. Now, if you're using the Windows subsystem for Linux, or WSL, you can use this as a toolchain as well. Note that C-Line does not support legacy WSL, which might be installed on some older Windows builds, but we do support WSL1 and WSL2, although we do recommend WSL2, and that's what I'm using here. Make sure that you are running a WSL Linux distribution that has a compiler, a debugger, make, and CMake installed. I can select WSL as the toolchain, and now C-Line will use the compiler installed in our WSL Ubuntu distribution. Now, if you're doing this, you may get slightly better performance if you have the project inside the file system of that same WSL distribution. In this case, it would be in backslash backslash WSL dollar backslash Ubuntu, although this is not strictly necessary. Now, if neither of these toolchains are covering your use case, you do have a few more options. C-Line also supports Sigwin, although you do have to install Sigwin manually to use this toolchain. For some use cases, Sigwin might be the environment you want to use. Sigwin is a POSIX compatibility layer for Windows that works a bit differently from MinGW. It makes it easy to port applications targeting Unix and Linux to Windows, but applications compiled with Sigwin will only run on Sigwin. However, if you use Sigwin with C-Line, it will handle all of that for you. 
In order for this to work, you need to install the packages GCC G++, make, and GDB when you install Sigwin. Once installed, CLine will recognize it, although it might take a moment. You can then compile and run your project on Sigwin within CLine. Now, we discussed all the tool chains that are specific to Windows. There are three other tool chain options which CLine offers you on all platforms, including Windows, and for the sake of completeness, we're going to briefly cover them here as well. The system tool chain lets you specify your own compiler, your own debugger, and so on. This is useful if you have a completely custom tool chain set up, for example, for embedded development. For example, on this machine, I have the GNU ARM embedded toolchain for Windows installed, which comes with its own compiler and its own debugger. So we just need to put the locations of those executables into the properties of this toolchain to make it work. Another handy feature that's also available on other toolchains is the option to initialize the environment for this toolchain via script. For example, to set custom path variables, which I actually need to do for this particular embedded toolchain. This can be accomplished by going to Add Environment, From File, and then select your script there. The Remote Toolchain lets you use CLine to run a project on a remote machine. The way it works is that CLine runs locally, and the CLine project you want to build is also hosted locally. But in order to compile and debug and run it, CLine connects to a remote host using SSH and does everything there. In this example, we're going to use this other machine here. It's running Ubuntu. The machine is called Pegasus. I'm running an SSH server here, so I can SSH into it. And I have GCC version 9.3 installed. The local IP address of this machine is 192.168.1103. For this example, I'm going to use this project here, which simply prints out the host name of the machine it's running on. As you can see, it doesn't actually compile at all because I'm using a Linux-specific system call that doesn't exist on Windows. But let's now compile this on a remote Ubuntu machine. Let's set up our remote toolchain. We are going to go into the toolchain settings and add a remote host. The first thing we need to do is to enter the credentials to SSH into the remote machine, which we can configure by clicking on the cogwheel. I'm going to enter my username there my password, the port used for SSH, the IP of the remote host, and click on Test Connection. As you can see, the connection is established. This all works. Now I can click on OK and wait until CLine finds the CMake, compiler, and debugger executables on the remote host. This is all working now, so I'm going to drag this toolchain to the top to make it the default, and then I'm going to use it. You can see that CLine is now reloading the project using CMake on the remote machine. This all worked, so now I can click Run to compile and run the project on the remote machine. And as you can see, it now prints Pegasus, which is the name of the remote machine. And this is how you configure the remote toolchain in CLine. Now, hosting the IDE and the project locally is one way of doing remote development. CLine 2021.3 now also comes with support for a new remote development workflow, where locally you only run a thin lightweight client, and your project and all the heavyweight IDE functionality are actually both hosted remotely. This is a new feature in CLine that's currently in beta. Now, I'm not going to show this here, but you can find out more about this in a separate post, the link to which is in the description of this video. Having talked about the remote toolchain, there's now one toolchain left, which is the Docker toolchain. It lets you run your CLine project inside a Docker container, which can be very useful. I won't go into more detail about this in this video because we do have another video, which is just about that Docker toolchain. It is available on Windows, macOS, and Linux. However, on Windows, there are a few more steps you have to do in order to set this up correctly. These are all discussed in that other video to which you can find a link also in the description of this video. So this was an overview over the tool chains that CLine supports on Microsoft Windows. If you don't have CLine yet, but you'd like to check it out, you can download a 30-day free trial of CLine on jetbrains.com slash CLine and give it a try. Thanks for watching.